Say hi, everybody. Say hi, everybody. Look how much drool we have going on right here. <coughs> oh, bless you. <coughs> bless you. <laughs> anyway, today I wanted to do a video that a lot of you guys requested. I asked in one of my vlogs. I can't remember which vlog it was. If you guys wanted me to do a video specifically on what I learned when I was in therapy. If you want to see my initial, my very first like therapy video and kind of like why I went and everything, I will have it linked down below. But let's get started. So a couple of weeks ago, my therapist actually texted me and she asked me how I was doing because I haven't been back to her since I had Molly almost three months ago and she just kind of wanted to check up on me, which I thought was so sweet. And I told her I was doing great and I told her I was doing fine and I was so happy and everything. And I also told her thank you because the things that she taught me really changed my life and I feel like now I have the tools that I need to get through any situation if I'm feeling depressed or if I'm getting anxiety again because I will have anxiety again in life and I will have depression again but I think she helped me learn how to kind of manage it and control it so I just told her like, thank you so much for saving my life and helping me and giving me the tools that I need so today I wanted to share with you guys some of those tools that she gave me and I really hope that it helps somebody out there if you're struggling if you're not brave enough yet to go to therapy I hope this kind of helps you so I have with me this green notebook and it might just look like, you know, your typical normal notebook that you buy when it's back to school time or something. But this book changed my life as well. This is my therapy notebook and I know it sounds so cliche and when she handed it to me, she's like, this is so cliche, I know it is. But this has so much important information and basically I took this with me every time I went to therapy and I only went six times but those six times just changed me and changed how I looked at situations and everything. And I would write down notes and if she gave me homework, I would write that homework down and a lot of my thoughts and a lot of my feelings are in here. This book is like sacred to me um, because it helped me so much during that time period when I was really low, I was super depressed and pregnant and all of that. So if you guys want me to do like more in depth videos, today I'm just kind of gonna do like an overview of things that I learned, but if you guys want me to do like more in depth therapy videos, please don't hesitate to comment down below and let me know so I kind of get an idea of what you guys wanna hear or what you guys want to see. Basically, I'm just gonna flip through it and kind of find some of the things that really helped me. One of the biggest things that helped me, and this is also super cliche, even when she told me, I just laughed, but she said, you know, a big thing is writing your feelings down, and you guys know I love writing my journal, I always do that. But a big thing to me was if I was having an issue with someone, to write that person a letter and as if I was going to give it to them. So basically just put it all out there, like not being afraid to offend, whatever, just write all your feelings out. And I did that with a few different situations. I would write it all out and then I'd go back to her and I didn't have to read it to her or anything, but she'd be like, you're over it now, aren't you? And I'd tell her, yeah, I am. I got my feelings out. It felt really good to express myself and kind of just get all of those specifics out of my head. Because if you guys are like me, and if you suffer from anxiety or depression or thoughts like that, you're laying in bed at night and your mind is just racing and racing and racing and racing. You can't turn it off. And so to write a letter to someone, um, and you don't have to give it to them. You can burn it, you can throw it away, whatever you want to do, but just write that out so you can get all of those feelings and all of those emotions out. And I did that in here and it was incredible. One of the biggest things she taught me was to keep positive relationships in my life and toxic relationships out of my life. Sometimes it's hard to get rid of toxic people. I'm not going to lie. I understand that. I'm trying to like get all my feelings together because I didn't write this out in bullet form. I just want this to be super casual. But I remember just leaving my therapy sessions and feeling so uplifted and feeling so good about myself. And I never realized how much of a people pleaser I was until I went to therapy because I would tell her about different situations or different things that gave me anxiety or different things that gave me depression. And she would just tell me, you're such a people pleaser. Like you need to learn to tell people no and not have to explain yourself. And that was always hard for me because I'm always worried about other people's feelings to the point where I forget my own because I'm always, you know, trying to help someone and I just kind of get lost and I kind of start drowning in everybody else's problems, if that makes sense. And so she told me, you know, to realize how important I was, but to also have respect for myself. And she said to me, would you ever let somebody treat Will like that? Or would you ever let somebody treat Brad or Max or, you know, whoever like that? And I would say, no. And she's like, well, why do you let somebody treat you like that? And that like shocked me. She's like, if somebody said that to Will, you would stand up to them and say, hey, you can't say that, but you need to learn to do that for yourself. And you need to have respect for yourself to stand up for yourself. 
even if it causes contention. And I think that's my big thing is I don't like contention. Um, and so I kind of avoid it as much as I possibly can, but to know that like I needed to stand up and I needed to respect myself more and that was really important because I'm a good person and um, that was huge too is that no, I, no matter what I did I was always trying to please people and she told me you know it's important to remember that sometimes there will be people in your life that will just not like you no matter what you do for them no matter how nice you try to be to them they will just never like you and you kind of just need to let that go like that's okay if they don't like me that's okay and that was like a huge mind-blowing thing too like that's so true not everybody's gonna like me and it's hard because I want everybody to like me who doesn't want to be liked by people and so I found myself always trying to do things to make people like me and then you know it's just hurtful when they didn't return the favor and so that was good to know as well one of the things that she told me also is to just do what I need to do to keep myself happy and that's another big thing that I had a problem doing was because I wanted to help other people so much I cared so much about everybody else I kind of forgot myself that I wasn't happy I was so worried about pleasing everybody else I guess that I kind of lost my own happiness and she's like if you can go to bed every night and be proud of what you've done that day and who you are then that's what the goal in life is, is to make ourselves happy. And sometimes that will hurt other people's feelings, but you need to make yourself happy first. And I know that sounds selfish, um, but it's true. You can't just always be doing everything to please everybody else all the time. And I think mothers especially are guilty of that because we're so worried about everybody else all the time that we forget ourselves. Another thing that she told me was kind of hard and it makes me kind of emotional. For homework one day, she said, come back and tell me all your good qualities as a mom and then write a whole list and then write a whole list of all your good qualities as a person. And I came back, you know, with like a couple things on each and she was like, are you kidding me? And then she started listing and I have it right here, like hundreds of things, of qualities about me that were positive and that were good. And I... I got so emotional when she listed that to me. I just was like, I don't give myself enough credit. And she was like, no, you don't. You need to love yourself more. And I realized how much more I needed to love myself. Um, like again, I was so busy trying to love everybody else that I forgot to love myself. And I'm not trying to say this like in um, a cocky way or like, oh, I'm so amazing. But I really do think we're all amazing in our own way. And we need to realize that how amazing we each are and God made us all a certain way for a certain reason and we need to be proud of that and I've realized that that God made me the way I am and he's given me these different situations throughout my life and I have fought so hard to become the person that I am and that I shouldn't you know let somebody who doesn't love me that way ruin my happiness and I think that's what was hard was sometimes that I get so emotionally wrapped up in different situations and um, the way people treated me sometimes that I forgot my value and I just thought you know what if these people don't think that I'm amazing then Maybe I'm not amazing um, But that's not the truth. I think we are all amazing in one way or another. We all have Incredible qualities about us and some people may not recognize them and that's okay and we are all Special I know it sounds so cheesy, but it's true God made us all a certain way for certain reasons so that we could help certain people Another thing that really helped me was she made me do two lists, one of all my needs and one of all my wants. And I have never sat down and thought about this, like what do I really need in life? What are some things that I really want in life? And then I saw those all written out and I was like, how am I going to get that? How can I achieve these things? And that was super helpful as well. And again, if you guys want me to go into more depth, I can do that. Another thing was to look at every situation and say, what am I supposed to learn from this person? What am I supposed to learn from this situation? And kind of just deal with it um, accordingly. Another wonderful thing that she taught me was that so much of the way that people treat us is a reflection of them and not of me, if that makes sense. So I think a lot of times I internalize things. So if somebody was treating me a certain way, it was because of me, something was wrong with me. Um, but then I realized that it was more just about them, like, just to not take it personal, I guess, you know, and it's hard to do that when you're so emotionally invested in other people. Um, but just to think that, you know, a lot of the times when people are struggling or whatever, they take it out on people around them and it's not 
something's wrong with me. It's kind of something wrong with that situation. And the final thing that I'm going to talk about today, there's so many things I could talk about here, was to just be you. And I'm 31 years old, and I finally feel like I'm coming into my own, and I understand who I am, and who I want to be, and who I want to surround myself with, and it's just amazing. So those are just a few things that I learned in therapy. I hope you guys found it helpful. Thumbs up if you did, and comment down below and let me know if there's other videos that you guys want me to do on this therapy topic. I really love it. It's really fun to share, kind of. I know it's kind of personal, but I hope you guys enjoy it, and we will see you guys later. Bye. Pretty things inside, so it has all the information for Posh Mom box. Okay, what is in here? There's tissue paper, 